All right, YouTube, welcome back to what we call the pod. We don't have a name. We just have good guests, and today is no different. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about this podcast. I've been chasing this one down since we started. It was on our top five list of guests. Um, I want to get into this one because this individual, without knowing it, I've never shared it, helped me get through college public speaking class by emulating how he talks. He's 33 years old. He's made a bunch of money. We'll leave it at that. 70-plus countries he's gone to. He's written a book, Dorm Room to Millionaire, and he's got another one coming out in December. Massive entrepreneurial mindset event, the Break the Code event, coming in, um, coming in. Uh, what is it, January? January 19th? January 19th, yep. January 19th. So without further ado, guys, welcome to the podcast, Mr. Alex Morton. How are you, brother? Definitely excited to uh, to be here on this beautiful Tuesday morning. So excited to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Pumped up. Yeah, man. So I uh, I saw you at a different event in September, I think it was. And then you, you dipped out. I think you've been gone out of the country for like 45 days. Where'd you go? Yeah, we just got back. This last, I guess you could call it, we call it tours. We were in um, Zurich, Switzerland. Then we spent a couple of weeks in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Singapore, Bali, Indonesia, and then uh, like four or five different places in, in Thailand. So we were gone for like eight or nine weeks. And that was my first wow. time like spending time in Asia. And we just got back over here in Vegas. So excited to be back home, obviously. But man, traveling is one of those things that I just, we, we just love to do. And it's amazing, amazing life experiences, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously it's a business related podcast, but you know, traveling wise, let's talk about it real real quick just early on kind of what places stand out to you as places that ha have helped you in different ways in your life, whether it be culturally or business. I mean, man, so so many. Like when I started, you know, doing speaking events and selling different products and services, you know, when I when I first like went down to Mexico, not like the Cancun, the Cabo, the glitz and the glamour Mexico, but like places where people that look like me don't go in Mexico, like into the, not jungle, but like into the trenches of Mexico, where I remember meeting families with that their, their home, like the flooring of their home was just dirt. And then they had like carpet over the dirt. Right. So like really seeing like poverty and struggle at a fairly young age, you know, I'm 21, I'm 22 years old. I'm promoting my business all over the world. So places like Mexico, places like Lima, Peru, I remember getting picked up at the airport and my business associate says, roll up the window. And I said, dude, it's hot. Like, I want to put the window down. It's really hot outside. You know, it's hot. And he goes, they will literally run up to you at a stoplight and like chop off your arm. I had a Rolex on. They go, they'll literally cut your arm off for your watch. Right. So traveling really exposed me to um, more poverty stricken places. And it really helped me increase my gratitude for my own life because sometimes living in America or spending a lot of time in like posh areas in Europe you know you see a lot of Mercedes and Range Rovers and you know Ferraris and Rolls Royces and stuff and, and you know it looks like everyone's got money in Scottsdale Arizona where I went to school at Arizona State you go around the world and you see like real struggle real heartache real pain Lagos Nigeria watching watch watching skinny skinny girls carrying buckets of water on their head and I'm thinking I will never be ungrateful again. So long story short, traveling exposed me to uh, a lot. It, it allowed my five senses to really, you know, see, hear, taste, touch, and smell other ways that people live. And through all of that, it helped me stay more grounded, more humble, and honestly, just more grateful um, for, for opportunities in my life. Yeah, well, that's tremendous. And I, and I think the you know, your first book does a good job of capturing a lot of where you came from and how you started. And, and, and you know, obviously your, your book that's upcoming, I think is going to just go even deeper into the spiritual side of that. Um, and, and just off the top of my head, I, I kind of had a list of people to talk about. You probably knew I was going to bring up Bob Proctor to start, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, and, and every time, I mean, you just right there, you probably didn't see it, but I said the word Bob Proctor and you just, what has that man done for you in your life? You just started smiling immediately. Yeah, I mean, he's um, outside of my own father, right? My dad's taught me a lot of amazing, amazing things as a, a male figure 
in my life. You know, they just celebrated their 41st uh, wedding anniversary yesterday. So he's been a great role model for me for, for many things. But, you know, I met Bob. I'm 21 years old. I'm earning 400 US dollars per month. I don't know who he is. He walks up to me at an event in Charlotte, North Carolina, and he kind of just looks at me. He watched me speak on stage for like 10 minutes, and then he, he just kind of looks at me, and he points to me, and he says, you're going to do great things in this business, and then he just walks away, and then 15 minutes later, he gets brought up on stage as the keynote speaker. People are going crazy. People are crying. They're having him sign you know, his books and you know all these different signing babies and stuff, right, and I'm like, Okay, so obviously this is somebody of some type of value. And I just went all the way deep into his material. And we built a, a friendship. We built a relationship. And eventually it turned into this mentor-mentee. And then it, it it was always a mentor-mentee. But then it, also, then it turned into like, okay, I've helped Alex achieve pretty astronomical things in his, you know, late 20s, early 30s. And then we actually became, you know, we were going to do this event together. So I want to say business partners, we were going to author a book together. And then he had this idea of the mentor and the millionaire. Um, that was going to be the original break the code event that I'm doing in January. And then the day he passed away last year, February 5th, uh, this year, February 5th, I made the decision that night. I was actually in Spain looking out over, uh, looking out over Barcelona and his, his wife, Linda wrote me on Facebook and said, Hey, I want to hear, I want you to hear it from me. You know, Bob passed away this morning and I'm looking out, I'm crying my eyes out. And one of the diagrams he uses is this big R that stands for results. And I kid you not, I swear to God, I'm looking out over the city of Barcelona. It's my wife's birthday. Okay. And I, in Re Renaissance hotel, just rebranded their symbol, their logo. And now it is the exact same R Bob's used for 50 years. And I'm staring at this huge R on the side of a building. All of a sudden, complete calmness and peace enters my body. I knew he was completely fine, spiritual guy going to go be wherever he's going to go, right? And I called my team that night. I said, I want to do an event. It's not going to be in Vegas because Bob's not going to be there. It's going to be in Miami. Find a venue. I'm going to get some of my friends to come speak, and we're going to do it anyway. So Bob means a tremendous amount to me, and I feel like he's always with me. Um, and we're actually going to be honoring him in Miami. Uh, in about a month and a half at this event. Yeah, there's a tribute event for him, but he's going to, I mean, he's without question, well, whatever you believe in, I believe he'll be at that event. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and so I kind of gave it a hint at the beginning. Um, you know, the, the public speaking thing, I want to start there because it's, you have it. So there's an it factor to speaking and you definitely have it. And I, and I, you know, just as a side note to the story, the reason I said that is, I have always struggled with public speaking and it's always been something that I'm curious about in your case. Did you ever struggle starting like going out in front of an audience or was it always just like, dude, I just got to go talk. I mean, my first business presentation, I invited 50, I invited 50 friends to my condo at Arizona state, 25 confirmed they would be there. 10 showed up. I was so nervous to get up and just talk about my product that I was selling I, and this, this is a true story, right? I literally drink two Bud Lights out of the fridge and I take half a Xanax. Before, I mean, I, so yeah, I, I, I was peeing down my leg, nervous. I went up there, I don't know what yeah. the heck I said. I was rambling for probably 35 minutes, right? Six of the 10 uh, left the meeting before it was done. Four said maybe they were going to get involved. Um, two never did. The other two signed up. One quit, one stayed. And then that was kind of the launch of my direct selling career. Um, but yeah, I was I was nervous at first, but it's like it's like anything else in life. The more you practice, the more you do it, the better, the better you're gonna get. So now I'm just as comfortable talking to you one on one as I am in front of 30,000 people at Marlin Stadium three years ago at Grant Cardone's event. You know, it's just something that's like a muscle you build over time. And then you just become, you become good. And then eventually one day, hopefully you, you become great at it, just like anything else. Yeah, yeah. And you got a college degree in what? Uh, strategic communication. So I went to the Hugh Downs, who created the Today Show. It's my mom says, right? Created the Today Show, Hugh Downs School of Communication. And I graduated. Like yeah. people think, oh, Alex dropped out and became a millionaire. No, I became a millionaire, but I actually did graduate college and uh, I think education is is great for certain aspects of life, and I think it's terrible for uh, for others. But overall, 
Uh, I think you do learn how to network, how to make friends, how to build relationships, right? And be, I mean, shit, without college, I don't know if I would have made my first million bucks because I built all my organizations through college campuses in my first company. Yeah, I think college also teaches people to actually follow through with something, starting something and finishing it. My mom actually, uh, I think I think it's a similar outlook on that where my mom was like, you can do whatever you want. You can go build whatever business. Because I was already starting in college. Get the degree to, sh to just for me, please. And um, exact same thing. Like and, exact same thing. Yeah. And, and I got it. And then three, four months later, I was, you know, I'm, you're at Ohio. I'm Montana. I'm out. I went right here to you know, Scottsdale where I'm sitting right now. And I, you know, I haven't left since, but going back to the, the, the way you talk, it's like articulation, uh, pausing. It's all intentional. I feel like, um, so d you had courses, I presume, first of all, to just for communication or so of, of sorts. I mean, it, it, communication, a lot of it was like research studies and BS to be honest, but there were some courses like intro to acting, right? So I took an intro yeah. to acting class and <clears throat> there was a moment where, I performed like an improv, like giving birth in front of like classmates. So basically that class taught me to like, not be afraid of speaking, acting, you know, whatever that is, just, 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 just do it. Right. And one of my first mentors, he said, if you get nervous up there, he said, no matter what you say, they're going to clap. So people should write that down. If, if you're giving presentations in a business setting, a Fortune 500 company, a hotel presentation, maybe you're selling pest control or solar or real estate, whatever it is, you're going to be talking at some point, right? So no matter what you say, they're going to clap because you're the authority figure. If you're speaking and people are listening, somehow, some way you built enough value for people to open up their ears and listen to the words coming out of your mouth. And then the second thing he taught me is actually kind of funny. Right before I spoke in my biggest audience back then at Mirage Hotel and Casino in Vegas, it was like four, 4,000 people. And dude, that's a lot of people for anybody. 4,000 people. I'm freaking out. I'm in a suit and tie. I got a headset. I'm like back there, like breathing weird. And he goes, dude, if you get, if you get nervous, imagine everybody naked. And I was like, okay, imagine everybody naked, you know, something stupid, but it helped calm my nerves. And I walked on stage and got a standing ovation. So, um, I, again, I just think, and so many people are afraid of speaking. Like, I think Jerry Seinfeld, the legendary uh, comedian, he said people rather be in the casket at the funeral than give the eulogy, right? Because they're so scared of speaking. But if people just step out and do it like you, and now look, man, you, you host a podcast. All you do is talk now, right? Yeah. So people just got to make that decision to put a little time, energy, and effort into it. And they're going to they're gonna be able to become a good communicator. Yeah, well, I think, that that was a perfect uh, segue point because really, uh, you know, speaking is success in my eyes. Uh, if you can't communicate effectively in any way, whether it's just together at a meeting or or in front of an audience, I don't think you're gonna be able to sell as much, get what you want, um, influence those sort of things. And 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 uh, just before this podcast, before you hopped on, um, Jason, my video guy, was like, "Dude, I don't know if I've seen a lineup like that event he's hosting, like ever." How, um, what goes into that? First of all, share the lineup, which is insane, but how do you get that done? I know you've been friends with a lot of these guys, but it's just, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, well, a, a lot of it's come from relationships and, and friendships and Pace Morby said the same thing. He's like, dude, most of the time, one of these speakers headline a whole event and you've got all of them coming to your event. Um, you know, I, I've, I've built relationships, you know, like Dan Fleischman for a long time, you know, back in LA, just staying in touch. I spoke at a couple of his free events at elevator nights, um, people like Rob Deerdick, you know, he's probably the biggest, most well-known, I guess, superstar TV. His wife was actually in, uh, network marketing. So we actually met at an event in Vegas. So funny playing blackjack. I just walked up to him and he knew it, this is like the crazy story ever. It's we joke about it because like nobody knows me. Everyone knows him. And he's like Alex Morton. And I was like, dude, you got to be kidding me. Right. Like Rob Deerdick knows my name. Like this is just ridiculous. Right. But it's because his wife was in network marketing. So we we basically talked for like an hour that night at Blackjack. And, you know, we built we built the friendship. I really look at him kind of like a mentor for sure, because the man's doing so many great things and he keeps family husband and being a father at the forefront. And to me, that's very important being now married for two years and 
all these different things. But, you know, Grant Cardone, uh, you know, multi-billionaire, Ed Milet, $800 million net worth, Rob Dyrdek, same thing, Stormy Wellington, arguably the most like piercing female speaker, I think, uh, in America right now. And then you've got Gary Brecka, who just left me a, a voice note. Dana White left him this morning saying, thank you for changing my life in the health aspect. Um, Pace Morby, who's, you know, he's had six, six seasons on A&E for a real estate show. And then a couple other special guests. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be tremendous, but really most of it is just uh, friendships and relationships. I had to cut a check to one or two of these guys, uh, small ones, but you know, at the end of the day, it's business, it's friendships and people want to be a part of it. You know, I haven't done a big, big event, like for my event, my brand yet. And I think people are like, okay, this guy's going to be doing this for the next 40 years. It'd be cool to be at the first one. So all of that mixed with Miami, mixed with a good ticket pricing where people aren't going to have to sell their house to come to the event. People were excited about it and they wanted to be a part of it. And it's titled Break the Code. Um, curious where you came up with that, if you came up my with that. My wife, I think my wife literally just came up with it. We were watching The Matrix, you know, like that's why we're using like the green and the black branding. I'm like, well, yeah. kind of like what I've done for 12 years is help people break out of this friggin' matrix, man. Like the control, the the whole idea of the line versus the sheep mentality, you know, the entrepreneur versus the employee mentality, right? So she, I think she said, you know, break the code. And I'm like, that 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 works. I shared it with some people. They're like, dude, that's amazing. Let's run with it. Um, because I wanted something like 10X because like, that's like, that's what I embody my, everything about my life is this whole like Grant Cardone's 10X, but I can't just copy something like that. I got to create my own lane and then run with that. So um, definitely excited about you know, everything surrounding, surrounding the event. Yeah. Super cool event. And I think the timing, um, is what I'm most intrigued by the timing of the event. I think right now, probably more than COVID is, uh, a, a, I would say a time of opportunity for a lot of people, a time of worry and stress and, and, and things like that. I want to look at both ends of the spectrum. We probably have listeners listen to this that are sitting there going, man, I don't know if I could ever get out of this hole. And then there's probably guys sitting there with some money in their bank and they're like, what are these guys doing? So I want to go on both ends. It's 2022. You restart. you got 400 bucks a month income. What do you do in 2022 to get ahead again? What do you do to restart with the, with, with things are obviously different than when you started. Yeah. I mean, moving into the new year, I think it's always important to get clarity on exactly uh, what you want, whether you've got $400 in your bank account or you got 400,000 or 400 million, right? I don't know. But if I only had 400 bucks a month, which uh, I did at the time when I met Bob Proctor, I was literally earning $400 a month. I was 21 years old. Okay. I had a lot of hunger, a lot of desire. I invested into myself. I would take that money and put it into myself. I would, I would, I would find a way to live as cheap as I, as I possibly could. I would probably go to like fries or Kroger or sprout some grocery store, man, and buy a bunch of rice, beans, and bananas literally, and use very small amounts of money on feeding myself. Okay. I would sleep wherever I was going to sleep, maybe bum a couch off one of my buddies. And then I would invest in myself. I would get on YouTube university and I would study whoever the people I'm modeling myself after. So at first I would pick people to model myself after. That's what I did. I said, okay, I'm in this industry. There are people making 80 back then, 80 and hundred grand a month, were like the pinnacles. Okay. So I found the guys making 80 to hundred grand a month. And I studied them down to a T, how they tied their shoes, what kind of shoes they were wearing, how they spoke to people, how they built their organizations. And I just modeled me 21 after them in their mid thirties and forties. And then I just turned up the dial on work ethic and intensity. So if I only got 400 bucks, number one, I'm finding a, a vehicle that's going to allow me to go out there and crush it. Maybe it's rent, maybe it's real estate, maybe it's network marketing, maybe it's solar, maybe uh, I know insurance is getting big right now with, among the millennial generation. Maybe it's insurance. It doesn't matter what it is. I have to have something where I control my own income. Like Alex can go put in the effort and the work and I can produce this result, right? Then I'm going to find people like, like, like you, like a Patrick Kenny that's got amazing results. And then I'm going to model myself after you, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions, and my actions. And then I'm going to take whatever money I got left over and invest into me, whether it's a course, whether it's a program, whether it's mentorship, whether it's an iPhone to listen to this podcast, 
and I'm going to grow my mind and I'm going to grow my business. That's what I'm going to do. Nominal answer. And I want to flip it because uh, I don't want to forget about the other part of the answer. So let's go to a guy that whatever. I, I feel like the money doesn't matter, but you got some money. You're comfortable. Things are paid off. What's your portfolio asset allocation look like? Um, I can't remember when I heard you talk about it, but and I'm kind of the same way. It seems to me the common thread amongst any guy that I talk to, like, like a couple of my best friends out here came to, came to the U.S. in 2017 with 50,000 bucks, and now they've got a company worth 50, around 50 million bucks. And, and we're actually it's that house that I that we chatted about that we're flipping together. And um, uh, real estate is the common thread that I see, but I'm curious for you, like. You make money from one vehicle. What vehicle are you putting it into? Especially right now, 2022, going into 2023, obviously in downturn. Yeah, I mean, before I met my wife, who's a you know business lawyer, way smarter than me. You know, I didn't own any real estate, and then she's kind of like, "You're making a lot of cash flow, like in your business, but what are you doing with it?" You know, I never really thought too much about that. I put some money in different, you know, I guess crowdfunding real estate deals where you know my dad found these deals. We put money in, and we got money out. I mean, one of them doubled the money, which is cool, but I never owned like the real estate. I was paying rent in Miami. I was paying rent in Beverly Hills, paying rent in Arizona, and I never bought anything. So now that, you know, she came into the picture, we own property in Spain. Uh, we own we own multiple lands in uh, over here, lots and land in, in Vegas. The condo I'm sitting in, we pay cash for this one. We just brought pre, pre-construction in Dubai. Dubai is a great market, by the way, for you, for anybody, man. People are... They, they like launch uh, an apartment building and I kid you not, I'm on a FaceTime with our real estate agent. They've got like a hundred agents in an arena fighting over dirt because wow. when, you know, they start in 2022, they're done in 2026 on the low end, people are making 35 to 45% on their money. You know, my, one of my mentors, the CEO of one of the companies I work with, he's buying up all of Dubai. So we're doing that now. So I would say you're right, for sure. Real estate is the biggest, most common thread that I've seen in my 33 years of interviewing millionaires, 100 millionaires, and you know, a couple billionaires. Real estate always comes up. But one of my friends, he has this 40-40-20 rule, and I really like it. 40% of the money goes into things that are going to produce 5 to 8% a year. It's not sexy. It's not that cool. You don't get too excited about it. But hey, Five to eight percent is amazing. The other forty percent, you want to go for like you know ten to thirty percent a year if you can, and then the other twenty, it's like the go for glory. He calls it like super high risk, right? And I don't think we really do that. I think most of our stuff is honestly pretty conservative. We've got a few million in something that I guess you could say is high risk, um, but most of the time I, we we play the long term game. You know, I, I was raised by. Uh, somebody that went through, you know, my parents in the, they, they, they were making lots and lots of money in Houston, Texas, and then the housing market, uh, completely collapsed and they filed a $36 million bankruptcy, right? So wow. the paradigm of my parents, even with me today, they're seeing everything there's, they, they still, sometimes they're like, you got to protect, 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 protect. So I'm between that. And then obviously this new way of thinking with the Grant Cardone's every dollar that comes in, it goes back out. So we're, we're doing a mix. We're doing a mix of both, but it's really, th- I'm, I'm everything that we do, I'm like, okay, when I'm, you know, 65, my wife's way younger than me and we have kids, we want to make sure we're good forever. Like, we're not going to go do something tomorrow because someone says, hey, man, you can make 100x or you could lose every penny. We're not touching that. But we've got some investments that are doing 15% a year, solid bulletproof, which are amazing. Um, and then we're buying up real estate. That That's what I honestly say we're doing because that's what we're doing yeah okay cool i love it and, and it really you brought it up several times in this podcast and you've, you've had plenty of success um how long have you been together with your wife we were just married married two years uh, this past august so it's gonna be three years yeah so about 30 you met her at about 30 when you were about 30 yeah we started dating october 25th four days after my 30th birthday okay cool so you, you've brought her up several times i'm just i want to talk about it a little bit what do you think has changed from say 29 year old Alex Morton to 33 year old Alex Morton might be a funny question for you, but uh, you know, on every scale, every level. I mean, everything, I mean, the, the honest, the honest answer is everything. You know, I, I definitely had seasons in my life where, you know, you go, you know, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, you know, you give a kid at 22, 40,000 a month, and then you give them a hundred grand a month. 
and then you give them a million a month at 26 or whatever the hell I was, 26 or 27, there's going to be a season where that kid probably loses his mind. Um, never got involved in drugs, though. You know, definitely was drinking too much for a period of time, spending money on stu- stupidity. But I've changed completely. I mean, some of my friends say, even some of my mentors, they say, man, the person you were at 29 and the person you are at 33, it's like you did a 15 year jump. You know, everything in my life, I feel like got more serious, more purpose. Obviously, we're talking about, you know, having kids in the next two or three so years. We're about to start building our dream house out here. So everything changed. I think there's like a mental shift at 30 with um, with guys. Because it's not just me. I can name some other of my friends. One of my friends just turned 30. You know, I'm not going to say his last name, Julian. Yeah. He's like, dude, I feel like a complete. Uh, he's like, I feel like I went from a young, immature boy to, you know, a grown ass man in a year. Because I think at 30, you start to think about family you start to think about your parents are getting older do i really have enough money to allow my mom and dad to live a life they deserve for doing such a great job with me like you go from like oh i need to buy more gucci shoes to uh hey man let's try to make you know eight percent on our money uh in this investment or buying real estate like I, i just think you get more serious as a man uh at 30 because you you go into a new mental place like Gerard Adams was on the the show yesterday on my Instagram live he was a crazy young guy you know made a bunch of money at a young age and now he's all about you know spiritual awareness and his daughter and it's just it's just a beautiful transition from I don't want to say boy to a man it sounds so cliche but I really feel like that's what it is you you shift into this whole new mental space and what used to be important is meaningless and now what's supposed to be important is actually the most important yeah and and with with that, do you think with social media, I, thought, I saw you post about Andrew Tate the other day, actually. So yeah. with, with social media, like a, a polarizing figure like him, like what are your thoughts on, on men? Are they being sculpted in a different way or are they being sculpted back in the right way? Like, what are your thoughts on this without having yeah, to? Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of stuff going on that we could probably get in trouble for for talking about too publicly, but yeah. I think the, pow- the powers that be are trying to feminize men as much as they possibly can i mean you see makeup ads now with men nothing's wrong with that i have gay people my family i'm friend i some of my best friends are gay like i uh, amazing awesome but at the same time it's like if you make the male population you know zero testosterone zero uh, manliness you know women and men are completely equal and they should both go do the same exact things at the same exact times every single day for the rest of their life well now you're like you're, 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 you're taking two genders and you're mixing, you're, you're making them one, but we're not one. We're not biologically the same thing, right? Like men are stronger than women. I I think women's brains are probably bigger than, you know, men's brains are more caring. They're more nurturing. Right. So I think it's, uh, I just think it's weird. It's a weird time in society. Uh, The political spectrum is, is crazy. And I think Andrew Tate, probably 70% of his stuff actually makes sense. Um, the other 30%, I don't, I don't agree with like having 16 women at the same time. And, you know, a, a woman should stay in the bedroom, in the kitchen. Like, I think that's ridiculous and total nonsense. But when he starts talking about who controls the world and what they want to do with us and where they, they want to put us in a box and feed us certain food and make us dumber and weaker. And I mean, I, I don't think people can really even argue with some of his stuff because it's so, pre- it's so, it's so out there everywhere we look. So. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a good time for young men like me and you to put our foot down and like stick to some of our own roots. And it's good to be a provider. It's good to be a protector. It's good to care about your parents. Um, You know, you don't have to have religion, but I believe believing in something, believing in a creator is, is a powerful relationship to have. You know, I, I give uh, glory to God for everything in my life. What that God can be Moses, Allah, Jesus, or the oak tree, that's not up to me to decide. That's for everybody else to decide. But I think all of those things together, you know, I I think I think young men and men need to stick to those things because I think society is trying to make us do crazy, wear makeup and wear dresses and, you know, stay at home all the time. I don't know. It's getting weird. So on that note, you've traveled tons more than me and pretty much most people. Um, I'm curious from a cultural perspective. You know, is this just the U.S. or do you go to a 
you mentioned Dubai a lot. So it sounds like you love Dubai. Listen, my, you know, my wife's from UAE, you know, United Arab Emirates. And they, I don't know, I, I feel like they do a lot of things the right way. You know, I'm sitting there meeting with one of the big real estate guys in town talking about, hey, we want to invest in Dubai. It's obviously, you know, it's it's unbelievable, number one. And it's uh, it's exploding. They're, they're, they're going to build literally what you see in Dubai. I think they have the uh, plan 2040. They want to, they're, they're, they don't want to, they're recreating what they already have again next to Dubai. Like the Palm area, they're going to build a, they're going to build a tower bigger than the Burj Khalifa. Like this is no joke stuff over there. And he says, he's not, he's not from UAE, he's from Europe. And he goes, we live in Dubai because my wife and my daughter can literally walk around the city at 2.30 in the morning on a Saturday night with no weapon, uh, my, my wife can be wearing a dress and there is a 0.001% chance that anything bad happens to my wife. And he goes, it's the safest place on the planet because they have so many cameras and people know if you break the law, you know, worse things are going to happen to you over there than it's going to happen to you in Chicago, like they literally say you can leave a bundle of cash in a brown paper bag on the street and in two hours later, it will still be sitting there because the people know if they take the money, they're going to get caught. So it's super safe. There's no taxes. Like, I don't even, I, as a, I mean, there's no income tax in Dubai at all. No, no income tax, man. Like you go there, everybody's, everyone's rich Europeans and then every, everybody else is rich Americans. And it's just like this amazing cultural thing. Everybody speaks English. You know, I don't want to hype it up too much, but it's not, it's not a, it's not the perfect place to be, but I don't, I don't feel safe. My, I don't feel safe. If my little sister walks around Vegas or Chicago or Columbus, Ohio or Phoenix, Arizona. My buddy, my buddy got shot in Phoenix, Arizona, downtown Phoenix. Like it's not oh, America, America's so safe. Not really. Like, not really. You know what I mean? So I love America. Like I'm a patriot, man. Like I'm, I'm red, white, and blue to the core. But right now, if things don't get better, I, I don't, I don't know how much longer a certain type of person is really going to stay here and keep their business here. Because if they come out with, you know, 75% taxes on money after a million a year, you know, crazy weird stuff that they're talking about doing. I mean, people aren't going to stay. Grant yeah. Cardone can't pay 75% tax. You know what I mean? So it's a weird, weird situation for sure. Yeah, this has been interesting to hear. Um, you know, the just the, the way that you think, um, I feel like is a lot bigger than a normal person just thinks. So you've adapted that. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, this next few minutes, I want to talk about the future, um, which I'm sure you think about all the time. What's, what's the roadmap for Alex Morton? What do you want to accomplish in the next 20, 30 years? I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal husband, phenomenal father, phenomenal son, phenomenal brother, phenomenal friend. And then when it comes to like career, you know, building, building a real estate portfolio for sure. We want to um, earn more money outside of the main business than we do in, in the main business, right? So we're not like rely, we're not relying on just mm -hmm. one of the, you know, one monster um, income source. You know, I love what I do. You know, being in network marketing for 12 years has been incredible. Um, the industry's definitely gotten weird as well. Uh, there's, it's not what it used to be for sure. Um, most, most companies are like pumping dumps and startups and garbage or lying to people about returns on their money, you know? So I'm happy I'm in a place where it's, it is education and it is customer focused and all of that. But, you know, I've always said, I, I, it's not like I, I'm bigger than network marketing. Everybody's bigger than what they're doing. You're bigger than your solar and real estate. Every, everybody's bigger than their, their, their business, right? So I'm really stepping into this whole idea of, you know, carrying this, this legacy. And I talk a lot about it because this is like what's so near and dear to my heart when it comes to my career, because we got money, we put money away. Like I'm, you know, we're, we're, we're okay, right? But when, when you talk about lineage, you talk about Andrew Carnegie, you know, sitting down with Napoleon Hill and saying, hey, I'm going to introduce you to the 100 wealthiest people on the planet. You're going to write a book called Think and Grow Rich. You're not going to get paid for it for 20 years, but you're going to do it anyway if you choose to. And Napoleon says, OK, I'll do it. And then Napoleon Hill launches this personal development, you know, era 
And then, you know, Earl Nightingale shows up, you know, decades later, and now he becomes like the, the most listened to man on the radio ever. And it's all personal growth, personal development. And then he hires Bob Proctor when Bob Proctor is like young 20s and teaches Bob everything. And then I meet Bob 12 years ago. And, and now I'm now I'm the one breathing oxygen still. So I, I feel so indebted to certain information and just going out there and sharing it with as many people as possible. You know, that's why the second book is gotten written. That's why I'm doing this break the code event. That's why I do Instagram lives for three and a half hours and, and make zero dollars. You know what I mean? Like, this is what I love to do. So everything I'm going to do um, is going to be obviously investments, obviously serving we we're passionate about different things. My wife's super passionate about, you know, trying to help end or stop or, you know, slow down human trafficking. Cause that's a big thing that no one wants to talk about, but it happens every 10 seconds. Um, so everything's going to be around making the world a better place, you know, building this career, building this brand, helping people, making a difference. And I have this vision of, you know, 40,000 people one day in an arena at a break the code event or whatever we're going to call it then and making it a and making it a free event, just doing a free event with forty thousand people, just because I want to help I want to help people get to the next level in their lives. So that's kind of the vision. And then also, you know, the company I've been partnered with for since two thousand and sixteen, I have a, I have a ton of gratitude towards you know that specific company. And my goal is to help that become a billion dollar per year enterprise as well. So all of those things. I love it, man. I got a few last questions for you. They can be as long or short answers as you want. My first one is why do most people fail? They quit too early. My, you know, my, the, the career, the, the industry that's paid me multiple decades of millions of dollars, right? My first year, I wasn't good. I made 13 grand. I would have made more money at Taco Bell. True story. Um, everybody told me no. I didn't listen. I, di I didn't follow any rules. So what if I would have just, eh, this isn't for me, you know, just quit, give up. So I think, I think, I think the biggest thing is people quit too soon. You know, we're in this microwave Instagrammable society where, you know, everything's perfect right away. Everyone is a millionaire overnight, but when you break down people's success stories, none of them are millionaires overnight. Like at least the ones that we still talk, talk about today, the Kevin Hart's, the Conor McGregor's, um, Sarah Blakely, who, who made Spanx, who, you know, married to Jesse Itzler, you break down any real success story, dude, there's at least a year or two of struggle, challenges, heartache, losing money, like, and people think, oh, they have a hard 90 days and they quit. Well, dude, no, no, no kidding. You're not going to make it long term. You quit after 90 days. Like, what can you go do for 90 days and become an overnight somebody worth 5 million bucks. It doesn't exist unless you're selling crazy amounts of drugs, probably. Right. Yeah. I, I would say people quit too soon and then they don't stay, um, they don't stay teachable and coachable enough long enough to actually learn how to build whatever it is you're trying to build. Yeah. Okay. Second question. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I'm curious though, on this journey, do you have any major regrets? I don't think I have regrets. Uh, I'm trying to think business wise. Do I have any regrets? Um, the only thing I probably regret was there was a season there where I really did not, I wasn't really a good friend to my friends because I was so like 20 hours a day business. And if they weren't in my business, like I didn't have time to talk. I didn't have time to text. I didn't have time to say happy birthday. And then later down the road, they're like, dude, you were like, not a good friend at all <laughs> for that four year period. But I mean, certain things I had to do, I had to do, I guess. So I don't know. I, I don't think I have any big regrets. No, I think I could have done a couple things better, but as, as far as like, oh my gosh, I regret it so much. No, because I don't even think it's healthy to, to regret too much because all of those things may, it, it brought us to this moment right now, talking to you at 10 49 AM, right? Everything we do, every action causes a reaction, the law of cause and effect. So every single thing that happened, led us to this moment. So why would I go back and change anything? Love it. Last question. Um, you're talking to whoever's listening or whoever, maybe it's yourself. 2023 is upon us. What do you got to do to get ahead in this world that we currently live in? I say number one, stay calm. I think when there's chaos and confusion, uh, the person who remains calm is going to be able to decipher good and evil, 
right and wrong a whole lot better than when we're flustered and our emotions get crazy. You know, the, the, the greatest professionals they, they respond instead of react. A, a, an angry dog reacts and bites somebody's face off, okay? As a human being, we have to be, we have to use our higher faculties and be able to stay calm and then really make the best decisions. So number one, stay calm. Number two, get clear. I think, I think people think they know what they want, but it's not even what they want. Oh, I want that car. No, you don't. You just see it on Instagram, right? So I think getting clear, I do a lot of journaling. I think journaling down, hey, this is what I really want to create. The life I want to create in 2023, it is right in front of me. It's on paper. I see it. I hear it. I, I taste it. I touch it. I smell it. I, I, I'm in this now. I can see it. I can see where it is I'm going. Number three, I think making sure you're, you got the right mentor, mentors, the right information, you know, who's in your brain, who's in your mind, who's, who's in your subconscious mind, who's influencing you every single day. Is very very important, and then number four, I think I just get get into work. You know, there, there, there's too many professors and librarians when it comes to oh, I've read every book, I've listened to 50 million podcasts, I've watched every video you've ever posted, and I'm like, your results are trash because all you do is you sit there and you, learning is amazing, but you know, not we know knowledge is not power; it's potential power. It's only power when we put it to work and we get and we go out there and get a freaking result. You know, Bob told me. By their fruits, you shall know them. Very simple. Look at their results. Do that. You'll understand if they. You'll understand if they understand based on their results. So go out there and get results. That's what I would say. And I would say keep your head up. You know, I, I know a lot of people. I'm not being insensitive. I know a lot of people um, got killed. You know, crushed uh, financially during C19. I know there were a lot of people in our age demographic that may be leveraged too much into the stocks, into the crypto market, and they invested more than they could potentially lose. And right now, maybe that's very down for them and they feel terrible about it. You know, if you can look up, you can get up. Um, I believe crypto will make a comeback. I'm, I'm not a fortune teller, uh, but I, I think, you know, keep your head up and get creative, man. Like, like you said, it, it, right now is the greatest opportunity in human history uh, to go out there and, and transfer some of that wealth into your own family's bank accounts. So I think love go it, out man. there, get creative. Yep. I love it, man. Uh, any last words on break the code event.com? First of all, that's a website, but any last words about it? Uh, before yeah, I just think, I know you got 10 tickets yesterday, which is amazing. Um, I, I just think uh, events build belief and you're always one handshake away from a a great partnership and relationship. You know, the best way to get into power and freedom is to get around power and freedom. And I would say the average income of the person buying tickets, I'm going through uh, Stripe and I'm, I'm actually Instagramming some of the people that buy VIP tickets. These are successful people. Like these are not, a lot of these people coming to the event that are that are buying, you know, you know, the VIP ticket or the all access ticket, right? These are people on Instagram. I'm look they're, they're driving exotic cars. They have real estate companies. They got a, a lot of solar people actually in different solar companies, uh, you know, door to door people. I got a guy coming in from Canada. I know he's made over $10 million uh, in door to door HVAC. Like the, this is where you're going to meet people and go do deals. Like you're coming to the event to learn, to, to hear from Grant Cardone and Ed Milet and listen to Rob Deardick's Q&A and all these different things, obviously, but you're there to meet people. You know, Pace Morby said something yesterday, and I'll, I'll end it with this. He says, I go to the events and I speak for an hour, but he said, I'm in the hallway yeah, during every that. break. He goes, I want to meet every one of you guys and girls. And I'm thinking, damn. He goes, I want to meet every single person at the event. Shake your hand, take a picture. And I'm thinking, dude, that guy understands the power of new relationships. And look at him, you know, six seasons on TV. I didn't know he's made over a hundred million, but he said it yesterday on Instagram. I'm like, wow, this dude's making a hundred million and he's wearing hoodies. You know, that's my kind of guy. So get to the event. That's what I would say. Break the code event.com. It's going down January 19th. It's going to be tremendous and you can meet Patrick Kenny there. So you better get there. Love it, man. Well, well, first of all, congratulations on all your success and just who you are as a person. I think it, I don't, I don't think people understand how much responsibility it takes to have the pressure on you that you have to just be a good role model for so many people that you will probably never meet in your life. Um, so just, just well done for being a voice of reason and 
a pillar and a, and a pilot for guys or gals to chase after their goals and dreams. Thank you, secondly, for coming on the podcast. Uh, I can't wait to see the reception of this one, and um, I'm excited to grow this podcast, and maybe in 50 episodes we'll have the 36-year-old Alex Morton back on and see where he's at then. I love it, man. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man.